Hello everyone, it's Monday, October 7th. I'm David Song, currency strategist with Daily FX, here to cover the key event risk that we have lined up for the first full week of October. Uh, there are some other things going on, namely, we do have the US China trade talks happening later on this week, uh, but we are seeing some interesting headlines even before we see the official uh, negotiations really kick off starting on Thursday. But as always, guys, uh, the things that we'll cover today, not a recommendation from DLFX or IG, my personal opinions. So with that out of the way, uh, we'll just run through the docket, uh, especially compared to last week. Uh, might be a little bit thin uh, as we don't really have too much in regards to central bank interest rate decisions, things of that nature. But we do have a slew of central bank officials on the wires this week. So. We do have Mr. Mark Carney from the Bank of England speaking on climate change. And then we have Fed Chairman Jerome Powell back on the wires after we got a speech on Friday. He will be speaking at the NABE conference in Denver. And then on the 9th, we also have Mr. Powell partaking in the Fed Listens event in Kansas City. And then we'll be getting the FOMC uh, the meeting minutes to the September interest rate decision where we did see the Fed deliver another rate cut. But don't forget, guys, that's where we also saw this growing divide at the central bank where we did see St. Louis Fed President Mr. James Bullard vote for a 50 base point rate cut. Uh, while we did see Mr. Eric Rosengren along with uh, Ms. Esther George vote in favor of retaining the current policy. So, you know, we'll see if the minutes will give us any sort of color on what the FOMC will do going forward. Forward, and we'll talk about what's currently priced into the market, what markets are speculating on, especially as we do have another interest rate decision at the end of this month. But following that, we do have also the European Central Bank releasing their uh, account of their meeting back in September. Of course, we saw the ECB roll out with this sort of bazooka stimulus package where we did get that reduction in the deposit rate, the new lending program, as well as the announcement that they will re-establish the quantitative easing program in November. Uh, so we'll see if, again, the ECB minutes will give us anything new, anything more to chew on. And then on the 10th, that's where we'll get, I think, the more bigger data prints coming out of the U.S. economy. We'll be keeping a close eye on the consumer price index, the updates to that, which is anticipated to show the headline reading for inflation. Small uptick there to 1.8% from 1.7% per annum back in August while the core rate expected to hold steady at 2.4%. And of course, we'll see how this will fare for Fed expectations. A lot of Fed officials really concerned about the inflation outlook. So again, given this sort of reaction to non-farm payrolls on Friday, and more so, I think, uh, the fact that we did see average weekly earnings uh, again on Friday, this past Friday, show this ongoing weakness in household earnings. We'll see how the Fed will interpret some of the recent bulk of data. And then on Friday, we'll be watching the Canada employment report where we did see a very spectacular number last month, 81.8K. This time around, we're looking for just a 7.9K expansion. So of course, we'll see how this will fare for the Canadian dollar as well as for the Bank of Canada, who largely looks as though they'll sit on the sidelines throughout the remainder of the year as we continue to see some good data prints coming out of the region. And then we'll wrap up the week with the U of Michigan conference survey, uh, which is expected to show a bit of a downtick in household sentiment. So again, we'll see how all this data will fare, especially the consumer price index for the Fed, as well as the monetary policy outlook. Uh, but just a quick review for everyone here, if you haven't been tracking uh, what's materialized with Fed funds futures, uh, after we did see some dismal business confidence surveys last week, namely the ISM manufacturing as well as the non-manufacturing survey, we are seeing growing expectations that we could see another Fed rate cut as early as the end of this month. So the next Fed rate decision comes on October 30th. And you know, if you guys were tracking this just early last week as we were coming into October, the fresh month, the fresh quarter of trade, we saw about 50-50 chance for the Fed to deliver another rate cut in October. But now, especially after we did see the big downward revision for the ISM confidence surveys, we're seeing growing expectations. And again, Fed funds futures now reflecting a greater than 80% probability that we could see another 
rate cut out of the Federal Reserve. And again, we'll see how these expectations will fare over the coming days once we get through some more inflation data, once we see how the U.S. consumer is, of course, faring. But right now and even after non-farm payrolls, and again, we did see non-farm payrolls miss market expectations, the downward the downtick also in average hourly earnings or average weekly earnings. We're seeing the Atlanta Fed GDP now model retain this uh, forecast of seeing the U.S. economy expand 1.8% in the third quarter of this year. So, of course, a lot of concerns on, you know, how will the Fed continue to steer market participants going forward. But, you know, when we take a look at even the Fed's own model in, in regards to growth, a lot of Fed officials looking for GDP to be about 2% this year. So, you know, my argument there will be we're not too far off of that mark. And we did see the summary of economic projections. Actually, uh, the revisions that we saw from Fed officials show an upward revision for GDP. Most Fed officials now forecasting 2.1% for 2019. So, again, not too far off the mark. We'll see how this data print or this gauge, if you will, for GDP will continue to fare. But again, for now, even though we did see non-farm payrolls miss expectations on Friday, not too much of a change in terms of the GDP forecast. So we'll see whether or not uh, the Fed, the majority of the Federal Reserve, will largely uh, continue to endorse this sort of upbeat outlook for the U.S. economy. Of course, Chairman Powell, even on Friday, just noting that you know the economy is not too bad. They they'll look to continue to support the economic expansion. So again, we'll see if we get more of the same remarks from Chairman Powell this week. As again, he is scheduled to speak two times this week. Uh, we'll see if we get anything meaningful from Governor Powell this week as well. But for now, here's the headline that I was talking about just before from Bloomberg News, and I think it's catching a lot of attention right now. We did see a bit of a gap in FX markets, but again, China narrow scope for trade deal with U.S. ahead of talks, right? So we're supposed to be seeing some of the negotiations going on starting on Thursday, uh, but again, we'll see whether or not we will, in fact, get anything material uh, from this visit from Chinese officials. Uh, but for now, again, my personal take here, guys, you know, I think we've been watching this this discussion since last December. We're already in October. And just my personal view, guys, not a recommendation from DLFX or IG. But, you know, I think if we were going to get some sort of a trade deal, I think we should have probably seen one by now. And the fact that we're almost a year out since these initial talks, I'm really not too convinced that we're going to get this ultimate deal uh, out of the U.S. as well as from China, especially given some of the remarks that we hear from U.S. President Mr. Donald Trump saying that, you know, he needs to see more from China, a uh, bigger take, if you will, for the U.S. to ultimately sign a deal. So we'll see how that will fare. But taking a look at markets right now, and we'll start off with Australia, since I'm here. Uh, the biggest thing I'm paying attention to right now, of course, is the monthly opening range, the quarterly opening range after it served us pretty well, especially for some of these benchmark equity indices. So for those of you that haven't joined me before, let me just do a quick recap. I think the monthly opening range strategy has worked out well for some securities better than others. And if you're taking a look at what's happened with benchmark equity indices, I think it worked out fairly well here. We're back in August, first day of trade. We carved up the high after we made fresh yearly highs uh, back in July, and then we got the pullback. When we started out September, we sort of bottomed out coming into September, set the low of the month, and then we grinded higher. And now that we're starting off October here, guess what's materializing, right? Uh, looks like that we have a bit of a stall here coming into October to maybe see a run at those yearly highs. And again, first day of trade for October, set the high of the month so far. So we'll see if that will continue to be the case over the coming days right now. Uh, I do have a bit of a bearish trigger on the relative strength index, one of my favorite indicators where we did see this nice bullish formation uh, materializing from August, lasted throughout September, and coming into October, looks as though that has largely failed. So we'll see if that will bring up some downside targets for us. But we're getting a bit of a bounce here. Uh, we're failing to extend the recent series of lower highs and lower lows that we had from the start of the month. So again, we'll see if we just get a minor rebound here. But for now, again, taking a look at the monthly opening range, opening quarterly range, which again, worked out pretty well, even from back in August, worked out pretty well for September. We'll see if that theme will continue for the month of October as well. And just running through the rest of the pack here, it's not just, you know, with Australia, uh, the 
ASX that we saw that materialize, even if you watch what happened with the Nikkei, right? Back in August, start of the month, we made the high, made the run to the downside, and then back in September, held this range bound price action, and then at the start of the month, set out the low, we got that nice rally. But again, ultimately, is this just a failed attempt here to make a run at those yearly highs, even for the Nikkei? And last week, as we started off the month of October, guess what materialized, right? First day of October, we made the high of the month. We've been sort of tracking lower since then. We've snapped again, same story with the ASX, snapped the recent series of lower highs and lower lows. So may see a run back towards the monthly highs here. But again, when I take a look at the relative strength index and what's materialized here, not only did we see this failed attempt here, back in September to make a push into overbought, but we snapped the bullish formation just around the same time series, right from back in August, this has broken down. So what does this mean in terms of the broader outlook? We'll see if some of the downside risk comes back into play here. But of course, if we look across the board here, and even with the DAX, same story, right? August opening range worked out fairly well, made the high of the month on the first day, and then we made fresh monthly lows towards the middle of the month, sort of consolidated ahead of September, first opening week of September, we set out the low, we got the rebound. And again, is this just a failed attempt here maybe to test those yearly highs? And should we be watching the bigger, broader range that we've carved out over the last couple months? But for now, especially as we're starting off the week, again, first day of October, set the high for the DAX. And again, is this trend, is this theme going to continue? And that's what I'm scratching my head over as we're going through the first full week of October. But for now, we've snapped the recent series of lower highs and lower lows. We'll see if we get larger rebound on our hands, especially going into the ECB uh, meeting minutes. But for now, again, broader picture here, same story with the RSI. Snap the bullish formation that we have from back in August. We'll see if that will again give us something more to watch, especially over the coming days here. Uh, but for now, even if you take a look at what's materialized for the US market, opening monthly range for August worked out fairly well, consolidated a little bit coming into September, made the move high, and we were just points away from testing not only the yearly high, but of course the record high for SP. And then at the start of the month for October, not only are we seeing, again, the high of the month being carved out during the first day of October, but also same bearish signal is materializing here. And again, we'll see if this RSI signature, what's materializing there, uh, will be something to watch over the coming days, especially if you're putting that into account with the monthly opening range. But for now, I think, again, even beyond the data and even beyond the bulk of central bank uh, heads, if you will, that are scheduled to speak over the coming days, we'll see if the U.S.-China trade deal will really catch market attention. And again, guys, you know, when we start seeing headlines like this, gets me a little bit concerned. So we'll see how that will fare. We'll see how the talks will fare. But again, my personal view, guys, I think, you know, we've been seeing this since last December. If we were going to get some sort of, of a meaningful deal, uh, I think we would personally seen one. But again, we're almost a year out not really getting any traction on that. So we'll see what's going to materialize over the coming days. And in regards to that, when we take a look at what's happening with some other securities, and let's move on to precious metals here. I'm watching the same sort of story for gold, for silver as well. You know, these have been sort of my favorite commodities to watch as we've seen. Gold prices push to fresh yearly highs in September. And again, there is this threat of a head and shoulders formation, right? Left shoulder here, top of the head, right shoulder. And even as we came into October, we were looking at a test of maybe this former resistance zone right around 1448 into that 1457 zone. So we'll see if you get a bigger push into that. The one caveat right now is the RSI signature. So we're still operating on this bearish formation uh, from all the way back in July, uh, from the end of June. And as long as that formation is there, I have to be mindful that we could be at a threat of, of seeing a head and shoulders formation. But, you know, looking at the broader fundamentals and, of course, the key themes that continues to move the markets right now, we have the lower interest rate environment. We have the U.S. yield curve inverting. Not only that, a lot of concerns about global growth, what's going to happen to China, uh, what's going to happen to Europe. It looks as though we may see even Germany uh, face a risk of a recession. Maybe same story for the U.S. And when I take a look at you know some of the broader macro themes that remain in play here, not sure if I want to get too bearish on gold prices. Yes, this could just be near-term correction that we're seeing right now, uh, but we're doing a pretty good job of holding former resistance, holding above that. But again, as long as we're operating on that bearish RSI formation here, 
you know, I have to be mindful that we could be at a risk of seeing uh, head and shoulders formation pan out here. So John wants to take a look at Aussie. Of course we will, John. Let me just run through you know, gold and silver real quickly because I think we are seeing some interesting developments here. So I appreciate your patience, Sean. So the one that looks pretty good though and, you know, looks like sort of a textbook play, if you will, is what's materialized with silver, right? So I'm not too surprised that gold trying to make its way back towards that 1448, 1457 region, again, testing that former resistance zone for some new support. But silver, very same story here where we had that nice move high, we made fresh yearly highs in September, we got a bit of correction, and I would definitely argue this is not a head and shoulders formation, and more than anything, I think we're doing a pretty good job here of holding above that former resistance zone right around 1450, 1460 zone. Bit of a gut check back in August after we broke out, right? testing that former resistance zone, maybe we should watch that as new support going forward, and even on the latest pullback that we had coming into October, really failed to make any sort of meaningful moves below 1680, so I'll be mindful of that more so than anything. Are we starting to see silver, which again, the RSI signature here, had a similar sort of pattern, not as long dating as the one that we saw in gold, but is this starting to break out? Right? I think that's one of the discussions that I'm having at the desk here. Is silver now the sort of leading indicator, if you will, if you're watching some of these soft commodity prices, you know, are we seeing some of this being attributed to market participants hedging against fiat currencies, especially given the falling interest rate, interest rate environment? And more so than that, you know, are we going to see maybe some threat of a policy error going forward, especially as we're seeing this divided Federal Reserve seems to be a similar case for the European Central Bank, where we did see uh, Ms. Lebine, uh, Ms. Sabine Lachenschlager resign from the governing council, right? What does that mean? Does that mean that there's going to be some dissent, growing dissent going forward, uh, especially as we do have Mr. Mario Drahi, he will be leaving the Central Bank at the end of this month, and then we'll have Ms. Christine Lagarde coming in to take over the helm. So ahead of all that, you know, some interesting price action going on. So silver, I'll be watching for that bullish RSI formation or that signal here, if you will. We'll see if that will largely materialize over the coming days. And also, if that really starts to materialize, what does that mean for gold, right? Are we going to see some sort of similar behavior here where we gut checking former resistance for maybe new support? And once we're able to break out of this formation, that will really negate the risk of a head and shoulders top. And more so, will we have to watch some of the top side risk come back into play here, given all the macro themes that are going on. So with that, let's jump into John's question about the Aussie dollar. So we made fresh yearly lows coming into October. And again, if you're going by the monthly opening range, what does this mean? Do we have a larger rebound on our hands? Uh, especially after we did see, of course, the first day of October was the Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision where we did not only get the 25 base point rate cut, but don't forget, guys, we did get the dovish board guidance as well, RBA, retaining their pledge to ease monetary policy further if needed. So we'll see if that will become the case. We'll see if we get another rate cut out of the RBA. Um, again, in November, that's their next interest rate decision. And of course, I'm sure RBA officials will be closely watching the, the trade negotiations going on between US and China. Of course, China Australia's largest trading part. But for now, I have to stay supportive. There are some conflicting signals. So first off with the RSI, nice bullish formation here. It snapped coming into October. So it snapped even before we got into the RBA. But right now, the lack of momentum, if you will, to close below the 6690 zone here may foster a larger rebound. We've gotten back above this Fibonacci overlap right around 6720. It's that 6740 zone. So I do have to stay supportive. The one thing I'm concerned is, are we going to see some range bound conditions here, even though we do have the RBA rate cut this month, even though we have the dovish for guidance for monetary policy. So for now, what's on my radar? First up, 68 handle. We'll see if we get a nice move into there now that we're back above that Fibonacci overlap following the failed attempt to close below 66.90. So I know, again, we did make fresh yearly lows coming into October, largely driven by the RBA interest rate decision. But right now, we carved out a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. We'll see if that will continue today, despite, again, the headline from Bloomberg News, warning shots about, again, this China, the U.S.-China trade deal. And more so, if we do a quick top-down analysis, and this is what I want to show you, when we take a look at what's materialized in the four-hour time frame, right, RBA, we saw that four-hour RSI push into oversold, quickly moved out of that, and then once we tried to make another run at those lows, 
Again, we saw a bit of divergence here on the RSI, not making the same sort of signal that we got again from the RBA interest rate decision. So from here, we'll see if we get any sort of meaningful signals. The last time we got that overbought reading on the four hour time frame was back in September where we saw that nice correction happening. So, you know, I'll keep that on the cards here. Again, we did get a gap down uh, to start this, to start the full week of uh, October right now, John. But for now, we'll see if this sort of uh, trend will persist. And you know what? I feel trend lines are always very underutilized here. So again, just two tags at the moment right now. I'll keep this sort of trajectory on the four hour. We'll see if we'll be able to return this sort of, uh, retain this sort of pattern. We'll see if we get a better feel of the gap from the start of the week here. But again, given what's materialized following the RBA, and of course, if you're just going by that monthly opening range here, did we set the low of the month Basically, the first couple of days of October, we've carved up some nice series of higher highs and higher lows. We failed to close below 69, uh, 66.90, and it wasn't just the first time, right? We saw this failure back in August, which brought us to some range bound conditions. Saw it back in September, right? Where we saw that sort of monthly opening range strategy work out fairly well for Aussie, and now we're back down here again. But we got another failed attempt to close below this hurdle. So with that said, can we see a larger recovery in our hands, and more so, are we in for some range bound conditions? over the coming days so john i hope that helps in terms of watching aussie here and you know what let me bring up the new zealand dollar as well as i think we're seeing something similar not exact but remember even with the kiwi dollar we made fresh yearly lows in october but nevertheless we made we're doing a pretty good job here of carving out a series of higher highs and higher lows despite the dip to fresh yearly lows at the start of the month and more so are we really seeing this just this failed attempt here to test my next downside targets right around that 6180, 62 handle zone? Are we seeing a little bit of failure push into that zone here? If you're watching the RSI also, bit of divergence, right? We saw this meaningful oversold signal on the daily RSI time frame during that sell-off that we had from the RBNZ 50 base point rate cut back in August, and then we sort of bottomed out coming into September. But even though we're making fresh yearly lows here as we started off October, not seeing those same signals that we saw on the RSI signature here. So that gets me a little bit cautious and more so, you know, do we have a larger correction on our hands, a larger rebound on our hands, you know, despite all that's going on? So with that said, we really don't have much coming out of New Zealand this week. But again, do we have to pay attention to the US-China trade discussion, see how that's going to evolve? And will that really be the biggest sort of market movie, if you will, for Aussie, for the New Zealand dollar, especially uh, given, of course, their uh, relation to China, and more than anything, um, of course, we're seeing this weakening outlook for the Asia Pacific region. China, the vice premier there, also noting that might be a struggle for China to achieve that 6% rate of growth this year. So, of course, we'll see how all these dynamics will pan out. And with that said, the one currency that's actually bucking this overall trend here, if you will, is the Canadian dollar, right? We do have Canon employment on tap later on this week. Uh, and with that said, I thought potentially we could see some further downside risk here, but we saw dollar cat explode higher last week. Again, some of the headlines that I saw was in regards to the USMC, the US, Mexico, China, uh, Canada trade agreement. We saw some lawmakers really push back against that saying that, again, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi really mentioning that they would like to see more done in terms of that front to really secure that trade deal. So again, maybe a response to this ongoing shift in the US trade policy. But right now, in terms of looking at price action, we've broken out out of this bearish trend line that we have from all the way back in June. RSI signature, similar story here, not as long dating uh, as we've seen in price, but nice bearish formation here from all the way back in August. Looks as though we snapped out of that. So does this mean that we're on our way to maybe test the September highs? But as we do have Canon employment coming up later on this week, we'll see how that data print will fare. And for now, the sort of bounce that we had last week, maybe off of those trade headlines, could be sparting out a little bit. We're carving out this new series of lower highs and lower lows. We'll see if that will persist over the coming days, uh, especially if we do see maybe Fed Chair Jerome Powell give us a little bit more hints about maybe seeing additional monetary support going forward. Uh, but again, we'll see how Fed expectations will fare. This is the one that's sort of bucking the trend, if you will, and more so. Will we see some range bound conditions here, especially after? You know, the monthly opening major for September, we got that meaningful decline, stalled right around that 3120, 3130 zone here. And now it looks like we have to watch maybe the September highs above there. I have that 3410, 
3420 zone. We'll see if that will come back into play here. Uh, but again, some trade headlines, I think, weighing on the Canadian dollar, but we'll see if Canada data will continue to outperform and again, give us the signal, if you will, that maybe the Bank of Canada will stick to the sidelines over the remainder of the year. And unlike its major counterparts, will we see the BOC continue to endorse this wait and see approach for monetary policy after we did get the rate hikes early on this year, right? So again, Aussie as well as Kiwi, they look as though they're starting to track each other moving in tandem, but again, the one that's sort of outlying or that's sort of an outlier at the moment right now is really the Canadian dollar. And again, maybe more driven by what the BOC is doing at the moment right now. So we'll see how that theme will continue to evolve going forward. And last but not least, let's just go over the dollar index real quickly. And even with this one, if you're watching the monthly opening range here, guys, look at what happened during the first day of October. I mean, we set fresh yearly highs, but we've closed in the red ever since then. We've been carving out lower highs haven't made a lower low yet, uh, especially following NFPs. So we'll see how the dollar will fare. Bigger picture, I'm still pretty constructive. Uh, sort of a failed, I think, attempt here to break out out of this consolidation phase, if you will, in regards to the RSI signature here. So we'll see what's going to materialize over the coming days, especially as we continue to see these expectations that, again, maybe the Fed could deliver another rate cut as early as October 30th, right? So again, with growing divide at the central bank, we'll see how all these expectations will fare. But you know, when we take a look at the dollar index, I think the sort of counterpart you have to watch is the Euro, right? Dixie, the DXY heavily weighted towards the Euro. So when you take a look at what's happening with the, with the Euro, and even though we got that meaningful package out of the ECB, look at that, right? Look at what happened on the first day of trade for October. We made fresh yearly lows. But nevertheless, we closed higher in the day. This one, again, continues to track this near-term series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, but for now, bigger picture here. I have a lot of conflicting signals. I had this nice recovery on the RSI signature. Thought this pattern might hold for a couple of days. But in fact, we snapped that uh, in September, even before we got into, into October. But in terms of price itself, maybe just a failed attempt here to test that 108.60 zone. We're trying to get back above the Fibonacci overlap right around 109.50 into that 109.80 zone. So if we're able to close above this region here, next level up that I have, the 1040 zone, and then followed by the September high, comes in right around that 111 handle, or just above 111. So we'll see if that will come back on the cards here. But again, despite all that, we'll see how the US-China trade talks fare. And and if we continue to see some can kicking, uh, little signs of an imminent trade deal, we'll see if that will, in fact, put some increased pressure, not only on the Federal Reserve, but you know might be for the rest of these major central banks, right? The RBA, the RBNZ, even for that matter, and more so even for the ECB, will they have to do more on their side to insulate their economies, especially as we continue to see this uh, weakening outlook for global economic activity. So for now, we'll see again, uh, if we get anything meaningful, not only in terms of the US-China trade talks, but of course with the ECB, uh, the account of the ECB meeting from September, and not sure if we're gonna get anything material, uh, anything new in regards to the ECB minutes. But for now, just taking a look at price action after we made some fresh yearly lows for the euro dollar exchange rate at the start of the month, are we just in for a bit of correction here uh, as we stall to again take out some of the targets that I have on my radar? So, with that out of the way, let's just cover cable real quickly. Probably one of my least favorite pairs to watch, but this one, uh, again, we made fresh yearly lows in September. We got the nice recovery going on after we made fresh yearly lows, but right now, uh, this is a signal that I'm watching on the RSI signature here. here. We, f we failed to retain this bullish formation from all the way back in August. We got this nice sort of pullback going on, failed to get a run into that 126.20, 126.40 zone. So again, with some of this Brexit talk going on as well, uh, are we in for a bit of downside as it looks as though we might not really see a material Brexit deal? Matter of fact, will we see the UK ask for an extension um, given all uh, that's going about right now, uh, especially as we do see Prime Minister Boris Johnson really struggle to find a deal with the EU? So we'll see how that story will pan out here. But uh, for now, looking at the monthly opening range here, if you will, on October 3rd, again, scratching my head over this. Did we set the high of the month already? Are we going to look at some more downside risk? Once we're able to close below 122.40 zone, then I'll be watching that 121 handle. But again, given the signal that we're seeing with the RSA signature, failure to retain that bullish formation, 
this one might be one of the counterparts where I think we could see some dollar strength materialize over the coming days. Again, despite all the macros, despite some of the fundamentals, given some of the technical indicators, given some of the developments that we're seeing on the radar right now, did we did the rebound from the fresh yearly lows, has it sputtered out? And are we on our way back to the downside, right? So um, I'll leave it there, guys. I'll be back later on this afternoon to host the IG Masterclass as well, along with uh, my good friend and colleague, Mr. Tom Wilson. So I hope you guys are available for that. And if you are, please feel free to join us. Um, but John was just asking for my email. Mm, you can actually find me on Twitter. That's probably the fastest way to respond or to get a response from me. But John, just the song at dailyeffects.com, right? Um, Again, guys, feel free to send me questions, comments, what have you. Um, but with that out of the way, guys, again, hope everyone enjoyed the quick overview this morning. And again, despite the sort of light economic docket that we have, we do have Fed minutes, ECB minutes as well. We have a slew of Fed uh, central bank heads speaking throughout the course of the week. We'll see how the U.S. data will fare in terms of Fed expectations. As again, we're seeing this growing speculation of getting another Fed rate cut this month. But for now, again, I'm still keeping a close eye on these monthly opening ranges. And again, guys, as we started off this discussion, right, the securities that I think worked fairly well and continues to sort of uh, follow this sort of monthly opening range strategy has been benchmark equity indices. We'll see if that will continue to be the case over the coming days, especially as we do see, again, taking a look at across the board with these benchmark equity indices, look at where we set the high of the month already, right? Happened on the first day of October. We'll see if that will continue to be the case. Again, it worked out fairly well for August, worked out fairly well for September, and we'll see if October will also be a similar story for that. But again, guys, thanks for your attendance, guys. Hope everyone enjoyed the, in, uh, the overview, and I hope to see you all later on this afternoon for the IG Masterclass. But until then, the best of luck on all your trades.